Thank you. Is the aspect of how considerate your team was yeah. in coming up with this particular concept or program. The whole aspect of mental uh, changing the mentality. Yes. It's quite a very important, especially if you come from a marginalized yes. uh, space. So, very thoughtful. So, moving on. Yeah. Let's look at your book. You have four books. Yes. And I would like us to go through your entrepreneurship journey. What is the what was the inspirational behind this book? And uh, let's look at uh, you can give us a synopsis. Mm -hmm. Is it a storytelling uh, kind of uh, kind of book, yes. or is it uh, a guide for any entrepreneur who wants to embark in this journey uh, of business? So yes. take us through your entrepreneurship journey. Your yeah. book. So um, the book, your entrepreneur. We have written four other books that haven't been released to the market, but your entrepreneurship journey has already been released. It was published in states, and now. Um, what uh, your entrepreneurship journey is all about is that as an entrepreneur you needed apart from training and the skills you needed a guidebook and this guidebook not telling you stories and information you needed one that you can always peruse and learn from mm -hmm. with stories and case studies of other people who are there before you who've made mistakes like you and then it will always be taking you because we realize your entrepreneurship journey is a bit tough and that's why when you see the cover of our book, I wish I, I had the book with me, you will find that it was um, a person jumping from one end to the other. So this is because uh, the entrepreneurship journey is a bit hard. So it's not a, f a fictional book. It's actually a factual book. Mm -hmm. So I came to realize sometimes in my business, I, when I was running the business, I needed to learn some things without going back to do referrals. And I needed a simplified book. So this book is a guidebook for every entrepreneur who wants to start a business but don't know how and uh, you lack information or people don't want to share the information that you're looking for. So this book will always be guiding you and this is the first series. Okay. So we will ensure we've released more series so that you can always have a friend with you who's walking through, you, through the journey with you. Amazing. Yeah. And I would like to find out, in this uh, particular book, you've mentioned there's, there are a couple of scenarios. Uh, an entrepreneur can learn one or two, three things yeah. uh, from, from the guide. I like to call it a guide. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in these particular stories, uh, are they personal, people around you, your parents? Yeah. How, what are the stories that you're telling? So uh, we collected different stories, including my story and um, um, my co-author's story. She's called Caroline. Right. So she collected a couple of other stories and then now we joined them together. So we were looking for if you want to learn a story from a mama mboga who started out or you want to learn from a you know an entrepreneur like steve jobs yeah what are the challenges they faced and then now we collected those case studies so that you can learn through it in a simplified manner de despite your education background yeah mm -hmm. so that's because it wanted to we wanted to accommodate all the people we train so that they can always after training they asked we need a book. We need something we can always refer to what you told us. You know, that kind of feeling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's also another uh, stream of income. Income, yes, for the business. <laughs> for the business. Yes. So let's look at speaking about uh, income and uh, your business. So it's, your, it's a service. It's a bus your business is providing service. And uh, I would like to find out how do you monetize through these particular courses and programs that you have? So our revenue models are diversified. So we charge for different courses, like the courses that we sell for entrepreneurship, the courses are like 2,500 per module. That's like 10,000 for the whole course. And then now that is for the courses. Then we have the books. Then we also have consultancy. And then we also have advisory. Mm -hmm. So each of them is charged based on uh, at what level so we have bronze level we have silver level so we check which kind of level are you are you at the basic level you've never started a business or are you at the silver level you have a business but it it's at its you know initial stages mm -hmm. or the middle stage then or are you at the gold stage where your business is already established it has everything but it lacks some things or you have a challenge with your employees that you need training or you have struggles with a couple of marketing uh, strategies so we create advisory strategies and we charge companies for that 
All right. Yeah. Uh, allow me to take you back. Mm. I only mentioned that you have an, you've had an opportunity yes. to uh, to train uh, young people, uh, young uh, business-minded people in Malawi, mm. other African countries, Nigeria. If you could, Nigeria. So, how did you get that particular opportunity? So actually it happened during this corona period. For us, the corona period was really a, you know, a shift in our business. So how it happened is because now the world had shut down, but people were connecting. That's true. So on the social media platforms, I just met people who are contacting us and they're like, can you come and train 50 people of our team? Or And most of them are in the villages and all those people. So internet brought us together. So I have never gone to Nigeria as, a, uh, as an individual, but then Nigerians have contacted me and uh, the company and asking for services and entrepreneurship training. So we already have established partnership with people in Nigeria and Malawi. And that's how during uh, Corona period, I was busy um, training 50, 90, 80 people just in different locations in different places. Mm -hmm. So that's how we met during Corona and that's how we diversified and, and ensured that it was in our goals to, to come across and, and now offer the trainings in Africa. But I didn't think Corona would bring it this close. Mm -hmm. So that's how we now ventured into helping these people. And now it became on demand. And now they're looking for more services from us. Yeah. All right. How is the social, what, else, what is the social impact looking like mm -hmm. uh, from what uh, your company has provided in not just Kenya, but in Africa at mm. large and how many people have you reached out through training? I'm so sure you have the numbers. So yes, uh, we have the numbers. So far we've reached 1,500 people and families because you see the good thing about business, you train one person, they empower their own families. Yeah. So what happened is we were training 1,000, uh, we started with 20 people, 10 people, then 800, 700. That's how we, we went until th at this point we've reached 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. And in future, we're targeting 1 million entrepreneurs by the end of a certain period that we have set um, ourselves to. So we're ensuring we can, we can diversify and get to many people who want to be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, is, it okay, is it okay if I say that your target market is the marginalized? Yes. It's the marginalized, that's our tag, because um, without the marginalized communities and the non-literates, mm -hmm. um, Holby wouldn't be here because that first pilot project that we went to help out made us realize the need that is there in the society. Okay. So that they're the core or what do I, the foundation of our whole business. So that's why we don't give up on them. And that's why we have a machine learning program that is always uh, innovating new strategies to help them to oh make right. sure like they're accommodated. Before we get into the couple of challenges that you guys are facing, let's look at the machine learning program that you just mentioned and how helpful is it to the members of the society? So our machine learning pro project right now is going through its fourth stage. Um, it's first stage where we have like we accommodate 30 to 40 people in each and every program. So machine learning program helps uh, the people who are not educated, who are marginalized, who have no access to education because the people who have no access to education, the only option that they have, at least you, you have choices. For them, they don't have choices. The only option they have is go into business mm -hmm. and they make a lot of mistakes because no one cares about them. And most of the training programs and also focus on sorry them. for cutting you short yes. and also the fact that they actually don't know that these but there are opportunities where yes. they can actually gain actually from. venture into so the fact that they don't even know and no one gives them attention because now they're not even educated and i came to realize half of the people who are doing business even here in kenya just check just around here in town half of them are not even educated yeah so does it mean entrepreneurship is for those people who are not educated? No. But then again, half of the people who are doing entrepreneurship are those who are not educated. Oh, that's true. So that's why our target market is those people who are not educated, who are non-literate, who don't know how to write and read, but then they can see how the money works. They can visualize. They have this particular idea. And actually, they're actually smarter mm -hmm. because you know why? They're street smart. When they go to the streets, they, they know how to just earn the next 200, the next, because that's all they need to survive. 
but for you you're thinking your education can get you the next job for them they don't think about that so that's why we focus on them so we started uh, project one and it, it was actually successful so half all of them became actually entrepreneurs 90 percent you see most of the conversion rates don't get to 90 percent that's why we feel like this is so impactful so as much as they're not educated they, they're running businesses that they can feed their own families mm -hmm. yeah so the next project we did we are in the money we're monitoring them so they're in the incubation stage of that one month coaching but actually they've already learned the skills they've already started their business ventures some of their like 30 22 individuals so now in in january uh, the second week the actually next week yeah we will be launching the next cohort All right. so this is how it's going through the machinani program is actually helping them and they're actually transforming their lives and their their own communities because mm -hmm. i remember one of the ladies she told me uh you know if it weren't for your trainings the community that i, I live in wouldn't res have respected me now because they thought I'm always, always the person who will be dependent on them, mm -hmm. who will be begging for them. Right now, she's the one who's advising them okay. on what they need to fix in their businesses. Right. Yeah. And who's eligible to be part of the machinani program and what is the process looking like yeah. to get to be part of the program? So, um, what our requirements are, one, they need to be... Uh, they actually need to have a challenge of uh, not getting a job, they're unemployed, um, they can't speak uh, English, or even if they can speak English, they're not so fluent. And then we also look at, um, we actually look at the people in the slums. So our first project we did in Madari, um, then we went to Kibera, then now we moved to um, Park Road. So we look at how are you able to sustain yourself you cannot if you cannot sustain yourself then now we enroll you for the program then now we look for sponsors for the program mm -hmm. who want to sponsor people in that community so um the people who we started with have been consistent because they have sponsors now we're looking for more sponsors for those who are watching this show and you want to sponsor a marginalized community or an unliterate person, then you can contact us Ooh. and we will get back to you. And contact this. us there. Let's yeah. so <laughs> give can, us information. Yeah, so you can contact us. We are located in Mirage Towers, Westlands mm -hmm. and our number is 0757 612 710. 612 710. All right. Yes. You'll give us the, the contacts again uh, as we wind up. Yeah. But I would like to find out the couple of challenges that you're facing as a company. Yes. So um, some of the challenges we were facing, um, one, um, getting to communities, um, changing mindset of someone or, or a person was so difficult. Right, true. Yeah. So uh, I remember the first challenge I got in the first training, um, the kind of people I was trying to help, they felt like I'm not from the same, I'm not in the same, um, you know, you can't connect to yeah, them. We can't connect with them. We can't relate with them. I can't think on their level. I don't understand their struggles. Yes. Yeah. So there's that disconnect. Mm -hmm. Then there was also communication barrier sometimes. Um, so the Sheng you know is not the Sheng that is everywhere. So different community, different locations or geographical uh, areas have different Sheng. So now you need to learn different types of Sheng. And then also we had a challenge of how can we change our machinani model to suit everyone. In that um, we are able to get to more people. So that's um, uh, one of the challenges we are also facing. And then also teaching in Kiswahili. Ooh, mm -hmm. I, I am good in Kiswahili, but then again, I don't have um, consultants or trainers who are willing to translate it and learn um, entrepreneurship uh, terms. In, in yeah, terminology in in Kiswahili. Kiswahili. Yes. Yeah. So um, there are situations where I have the people who only speak English, they cannot speak Kiswahili. And the situation I have uh, people who only speak Kiswahili. So in such a training, so you I need had a to translator. Change. No, actually, I didn't have a translator. I can't afford a translator yeah. for mm -hmm. every training. Yes, yeah, sure. So what I was doing, I had to train in English and train in Kiswahili. So you can imagine the time I'm using. Mm -hmm. So um, 
that are, those are the challenges we're translating and uh, changing our programs into Kiswahili, into the Shang, into those simplified manner. So we also have had a challenge of um, not finances, but the sponsorship, you okay. know, sponsoring this program of maybe 50 people, 100 people applying at the same time is so hard because young people who want to, to join the course, some of them cannot afford your prizes. So having a sponsor to, you know, sponsor this. Now you need a sponsor to cover to that cover expenses. Costs, yeah. Okay. And getting to those areas. Sometimes we go, I didn't actually know the, the areas. I'm learning new places. And then now getting to those areas needs a lot of transport. You need equipment. You need to transport all your equipments to get there and all the training tools and all, all that. So those are the challenges we face. And also getting to the digital as well. You know, there's a digital divide. I, if we are training the marginalized communities, they want to promote their products on Facebook, but they don't have um, those phones, the, uh, the phones that we have. So they have Kabambe. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, what we do is we try to help them go to the cybers, but they still need help. We need, we need manpower. The manpower that will volunteer voluntarily to come and help these people wherever they are. Because I can do the training, but then again, we need people on ground to help them you know, follow up and all that. Yeah. Oh, so right. short of manpower. Okay, okay. So, and let's look at a couple, the vision. How is the vision looking like? Uh, I don't want to give you a time frame, but let's look at uh, three years down the road. Yeah. So, three years down the road. Um, oh, you yeah. can give you a time frame. Yeah. Give yourself a time okay. frame. Okay. Uh, for us, we, were, we, don't, we are looking at five years down okay. the road. Okay, okay. Um, we're looking uh, at a situation where we have uh, a hub, um, We've already given it a name. It's called Ujuzi Africa Hub. And this hub is going to be a training hub where you, as an entrepreneur, can just come in and get people to help you out. So you can just walk in. This department will help you with training. This department will help you with you know, mm -hmm. uh, marketing. And then you can also connect globally. You don't need to fix your business into on the Kenyan perspective. You can connect with people from Malawi, Nigeria. Nice, become a global so it becomes a global Internet. village, uh, you know, a hub, a business hub that you can always come in. Mm -hmm. Instead of people giving you um, uh, birthday presents and all that, they give you business showers and mm -hmm. all that. So that's the kind of thinking we're looking at. And this hub is going to be bigger than what we think of. And um, that's where we see ourselves with all things digital and also helping the marginalized community fit in to the world despite the fact that they've been segregated. Oh, and I'm yeah. looking forward to have a conversation with you again yes. uh, in five years or even less. Yes. Uh, yes. So I would like to have a conversation with you again and see how far uh, the whole be training solution okay. has gone. So how can people find you on social media? So uh, on our social media platforms, we are on uh, Instagram, Holby Training Solutions, Facebook, Holby Training Solutions, um, on our phone number, 07 57 612 710, that's our phone number. Uh, we're located in Westlands, Mirage Towers, first floor. So in case you, and you, know, you want to get to us through email, holbyinvestment at gmail.com. All right. Yes. Thank you very much, Fahia Jamal, for creating time to be with us. And that was a very uh, in intriguing and nice conversation, especially for young people who are lacking employment and they're looking for ways just to curb the issue of unemployment. Yes. And uh, being in a position you can offer skills and yes. training in all aspects of entrepreneurship, it's really, really impactful. We thank you for coming through. Yes. I'm looking forward to having this conversation with you again. Thank you so much, Michelle. I really appreciate it. All right. So make sure you stay tuned. We have much more coming your way right here on Entrepreneurship Tuesday on Why in the Morning at Y254 Channel. Is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira. Is where you can find me across all my social. We'll be right back.